Right, it's time to run the first fix electrics into the van, pull all the cables in that are going to be buried in the walls to their various locations. I've gone through this before on previous videos about wiring in a moving vehicle. You need to use a multi-stranded cable. You can't use solid core cable in a moving vehicle because what happens with the vibration and movement over time, that solid core cable could snap and then obviously you've lost all your power. So with a multi-stranded cable, you've got a number of different cores in there, loads of little cores that make up the cable. I'll put a better picture up on the screen here. So even if one of those cores happens to break, you've still got the bulk of the cable still intact. So you must use a multi-stranded flex. And the best one to use is a double insulated. So the individual cores are insulated and then it's insulated again with an outer sheave. And then what I like to do, because a lot of these metal edges on your van are very, very sharp. And if you just leave a cable rubbing up against that over time, you're traveling around that could quite easily cut through the cable and then cause a short circuit. So anything that's buried in the wall of the van, I like to protect it with some of this flexible plastic conduit, especially where it goes through past the sharp metal edges. Okay, we've got a couple of different types of cable. The Arctic Blue cable you've seen me use before, I'm gonna use for my 230 volt mains off of my inverter to a couple of three pin sockets in the van. So that's what we'd be using there. And then I've got a rubber sheathed cable, which is just a two core cable, which I'll be using for all the 12 volt supplies. It's good practice to distinguish between the different voltages with different types of cable, because then when you've done your installation, you can easily identify what is what. I know that this will be 230 volt mains and this will be 12 volt DC. So it's very easy to tell which is which. And then another cable that we're going to be using is these battery cables. They're single core, but they're flexible again. They're multi-stranded, the same as the rest of the cables. And these are what we're going to be using to run from our batteries to our blade fuse holders. Now, previously I've mounted the blade fuse holder close to where the batteries are, and then run all of my cables out to all the various devices from there. But obviously that involves a lot of cable work. So what I've done in this installation to keep the cables down to a minimum, I'm gonna locate the blade fuse holders at a point where they're gonna be used. So for instance, I know I'm gonna need a lot of power supplies over by the kitchen for lighting and for the water pump, etc. So I'm gonna put a blade fuse holder over this side of the van, and then I'm gonna run a cable, one cable, from the batteries to the blade fuse holder, and then all the cables in the kitchen area are just gonna be relatively short and local. So that way I don't have to run loads of cables to that point, um, and it's just gonna save me a lot of money on installation at the end of the day. All right, so let's get it pulled in. Now you'll have already seen me install the solar panel cables when we did the solar panel installation video. If you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link in the top corner here for you to watch. So the next cables we need to install are the battery cables from the van starter battery to the DC to DC charger. And I've got a different route to take for that underneath the van. To get access to the battery cover, it's in the passenger footwell. Undo these little screws half a turn. Ooh. Some of these might already be open. So. so there's two 13 mil nuts or bolts, should I say, at the front here. I need undoing first. the cover and then to remove the battery I suggest disconnect the negative first mine's got a little quick release on on the terminal there, so that's the negative out of the way. 
and then take the cover off the positive. There should be one, there's a 10 mil nut just there holding that terminal on, so we'll get a spanner on that. Undo this 10 mil nut. is all the positives and then we can take the battery out oh, this will be heavy Eesh. and then if you want to remove the actual battery box again it's four 13 mil bolts that hold that to the van freeze up the entire box to come out we'll mark where we want the cable gland to come in here for the DC to DC battery cables and then we'll take this box out I'll drill it um, when it's outside be easier and then we can get that cable connection made so this is the battery box out of the van uh, there's not much room here and the positive connections are here so it's a bit tight this end. There's plenty of room at the negative end here. So what I'm probably going to do is put a hole through in about this sort of location and then put this gland in and then the uh, flexible conduit will push into this gland. So I'll make a, a really good cable conduit for that. So I'm going to just drill a hole here. It's a 25mm gland. Put that in there. There's just a nut on this gland that goes in the other side. That's it. And then the flexible conduit will just push into there. These little barbs here will just keep hold of that. There we go. On the DC to DC charger, both battery ends, the so van battery and the leisure battery, on the positive connection we need to fuse both those wires. So it's a 30 amp DC to DC charger, so I'm going to put 40 amp fuses in. So I've got two of these fuse carriers with a 40 amp fuse in there, and then we'll wire one of those to the leisure battery positive and one to the van battery positive. It's a good one. So there's that plastic gland in the battery box with the flexible cable pushed into it. I've routed it over the top of the diesel tank around the bracket tree and then clipped it along the chassis rail of the vehicle all the way down the van. There's convenient locations where you can put cable ties so it's nicely secured, it's not going anywhere and then that cable runs all the way down to the back of the van and then I'll show you where it goes into the vehicle. So the bottom of this rear light pillar inside there's a, a boxing made out of the structure of the van and then right at the bottom on the outside there's quite a big hole and it's used to ventilate the van. When you shut a door on the side it would create like a load of positive pressure in there. There's nowhere for that air to go and on these rear pillars there's some vents inside and all the air vents out through a hole in the bottom but it gives us a really convenient location to run our cables into the van. I'll show you from underneath. 
So there's our flexible conduit coming round. And then right at the bottom of that pillar, there's a hole there. And you can get your cable, flexible conduit in to the back of the van there. And then inside the van here, in the rear corner, there's that light pillar. And that conduit is now coming up there, up from below. And that's our two 16 mil battery cables. So down inside the battery box now, there's that plastic gland that we cut in. There's the two 16 mil cables coming through the gland, through that conduit under the van. And then we've got that 40 amp fuse there, uh, just uh, tucked in, in that space there. There's plenty of space down the back there. And then coming off of it with another battery cable. And then this will extend right the way to the positive end of the battery and there is a spare terminal. I've just put some tape on that ring terminal at the moment so it doesn't touch anything until we've made safe the other end. So that'll get connected there. And then similarly, there's that 16 mil negative cable from the DC to DC and that'll go on one of these spare terminals here. And again, I've just taped up the uh, ring on that just for now, just to make it safe until we get the other end of the cables tucked away. Right, it's time to pull the cables in for the blade fuse holder. It's not going to be located down where my batteries were in the garage because that would mean I'll have to pull loads of cables back into the garage. So to save us doing that, I'm actually just going to install one positive and negative from the batteries all the way up to this location, which is going to be in a cupboard above the kitchen. And I'm going to have the blade fuse holder here. And then it can run out from here to the lights, the lights under the cupboards, and it can run down this pillar into the kitchen cupboard for the water pump. So that keeps all these cable runs a lot shorter and uh, saves us a bit of money. Now it's no good just running say a 1.5 or even a 2.5 cable from the garage up to this blade fuse holder because I could have uh, 30 or 40 amps worth of lights and other things running from this blade fuse holder. So I need a larger supply to it. So I've done some calculations on what I'm going to have connected to this and I've worked out that I need some 10 mil cable. So I've got about 9 metres of cable here which is a lot more than I probably need. So we need to run this through some conduit initially because we're going to bury it in all these little ways here and some of these edges are sharp. Put it in some conduit and then pull that conduit through to this location and back down to the batteries. Just from previous experience I've always found it easier to put your cables into the conduit first because you can hold the conduit out dead straight they go in easier and then once they're in the conduit then put them into your van I'm just taping these together so that they'll slide from the conduit a bit easier and then it's just a case of feeding those all the way down to the other end It is just a case of taking your time, feeding it through this box in, making sure you avoid all of the cables for the lights and that you don't want to get those snagged. Just keep feeding it up. So we've got our 12 volt supply to the blade fuse holder, positive and negative, pulled in. Pulled in the first one of the feeds off the blade fuse holder. This is going to be to the water pump in the kitchen. This is just a two core rubber cable. It's really important when you pull all your cables in to make sure that you note what they are. Put a little label on them that says what it is, pump. And then when you come to do all your final connections, especially round by this blade fuse holder, because we'll end up with half a dozen cables round here. And if they were all black like that, you wouldn't have a clue what was what. So make sure you label them. And then when you come to terminate them, you'll know where they go. We need a power supply to connect to the max fan up in the ceiling here. 
So we've managed to pull again another two core rubber cable. I've concealed it in this box in here. There is conduit right the way up to this point. That runs all the way back here. You can see the conduit there, look. And then it actually comes up in here and then runs all the way back to where our blade fuse holder is going to be. So that's quite a short little run. We've obviously got the one for the pump and then I've pulled in another one over the far side here. I'll show you that, which runs up here. Again, two core rubber cable in conduit. There's one just hanging over there. And these are for a couple of lights in the bedroom, a couple of reading lights. So I'm gonna have a light there. I'm also gonna have a light here over the end of the bed. And then that conduit again runs down this rear light pillar and comes out with all our other cables in the bottom corner here. So that's all the first fixed cables pulled in, all the concealed ones. Some of the ones like the lights under the wall cupboards, I can do those cables once the cupboards are in place. So I won't do those yet. The next job now is just to insulate all the van before we ply line. As you can see, I've still already got some insulation waiting to go in. That'll be the next video that we do. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you found this video to be helpful to you, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section below. I love reading all the comments you guys make. And of course, if you've got any questions about the van build so far or questions about your own van build, also leave them in the comments section. I'll try and get back to as many as I can. And it just remains for me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.